Hello, God bless you. What's got my hair, aka Cal McRitchie. It's safe to say that there's little to no surprise that there have been many adaptations of the New Testament over the years. Ever since the medium of film was put into practice and mastered, we've seen countless gospel-based films and miniseries, from Robert Powell in Jesus of Nazareth, to Mel Gibson's brutal yet passionate The Passion of the Christ. A wide variety of filmmakers and actors have taken on the role of adapting the New Testament, and now that people have successfully preached the gospel from various angles in film adaptations, one question remains in this contemporary day and age. How do you adapt the gospel story again, only this time, make it refreshing? The answer is seemingly a lot more simplistic than you think. Focus on the people that Jesus impacted at the time. God loves the world in this way, that he gave his only son. I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> I was counting on it. Anything is possible now. Honestly, I don't recall how I first heard of this television series to begin with. Just browsing on YouTube as most people who procrastinate do. And this series stuck out to me for several reasons. Firstly and foremostly, the series seems to be some kind of underdog phenomenon. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you have never even heard of this series until now, but apparently this was, and still is to the extent of my knowledge, the biggest crowdfunded project ever. You know, last year, over 15,000 people from around the world crowdfunded a record-breaking $10 million to create an original series outside the Hollywood system. And we created this so the world can experience Jesus in a way that's never been done before. And the budget really shows, and I mean that in the best way possible. As a filmmaker, I really appreciate how they took a more simplistic approach, and yet their budget was high enough to make everything look really convincing. Another thing that stood out to me was that this show has its own app. And through the app, and later on their own YouTube channel, literally anybody can watch the first season for 100% free. I noticed that the way the scenes were written were, for lack of a better word, poignantly humanized. Because of this approach that I noticed, there are several quirks to this show. I noticed that every single character, even Jesus himself, were presented as more humanized. There's a few socially awkward quirks here and there. They're not afraid to let out some light-hearted humor. I will admit, a part of me was slightly skeptical. There was a part of me that was worried that they were trying a bit too hard to be contemporary. Modernized for you uneducated people. However, I can safely say that after watching the whole first season for free, I think this approach actually works for the show's favor. And the show really works because there's so much passion, effort, and research put into it. Every now and then, Dallas Jenkins, the director of the show, and his crew give a few interviews and behind-the-scenes footage showcase more of their approach, and from what I've seen, almost everyone adores this series. Young children, older people, elder people, people from different Christian denominations really love this series. Dallas Jenkins and his crew are even openly honest enough to confront the question on whether they're committing heresy or not. And from what I've seen and heard, they're willing to stay as accurate as possible while simultaneously giving their own unique spin on it. Because this is another adaptation from an excellent point of view, the people that Jesus impacted. Yes, the show is all about the life of and teachings of Jesus Christ. But in this adaptation, all the other characters are given the same main spotlight. The show focuses on Mary Magdalene, a woman who was haunted by demons until Jesus cured her by redeeming her. The apostles like Simon the fisherman and Matthew the tax collector, as we see their daily struggles until Jesus comes along. The show even gives some focus on Nicodemus. My name is Nicodemus. I'm a Pharisee. I'm visiting from Jerusalem. I'm a man of God. The Jewish Pharisee whom Jesus spoke to in the Gospel of John. These characters even have character arcs throughout the episodes. Especially for Nicodemus, there is a serious build-up to all of their meetings with Jesus Christ. And I believe you have experienced a miracle, Mary. It was someone else. Some... one... else? I was one way, and now I am completely different. And the best moments of these series are when those meetings occur. 
it makes the meetings all the more impactful. So therefore the show is more rightfully focused on the characters and how they fix their struggles with Jesus. And combine this with the tremendous acting and the poignant writing and you've got yourself a stellar show. However, like many ambitious adaptations, of course, the filmmakers do tend to take a few creative liberties. They are still very committed to making it as accurate as possible, and they all did their research. But they still took the time to add in a few additional quirks and additional scenes. For example, they gave Matthew the tax collector a few characteristics that are similar to that of Asperger's. Matthew, son of Alpheus, follow me. What's the tablet for? I grabbed it without thinking. I can put it back. No, no, keep it. Where are we going? A dinner party. I'm not welcome at dinner parties. Well, that's not going to be a problem tonight. You're the host. I don't know if they're walking this fine line of being respectful and disrespectful, but from what I've heard, a lot of people tend to relate to that. I mean, I myself am autistic. And to all of you disabled people out there, you are beautiful. You are expertly crafted just the way you are. And they're still being respectful to the source material, so I guess it works. Besides, more positive representation of autistic and Asperger's people is extremely welcomed. Get used to different. There's also an entire episode called Jesus Loves the Children or Jesus Meets the Children. Despite the fact that this entire third episode is nowhere to be seen in the scriptures, it's considered one of the best episodes in the series. This episode is set when Jesus is still being a carpenter for a living before his public ministry. And this episode is really charming because it introduces these playful children characters. Just leave him alone. Couldn't have waited half an hour, eh? Who come across Jesus' campsite as he's working away creating wood. Creating wood works, precisely. <laughs> Jesus notices them and decides to invite them to help, say hello, and teach them a few lessons. Shalom, Abigail's friends. And Joshua again. Shalom. Shalom. Can we be around today? I suppose. But I have some work to do. You might have to help. There's this one blessed scene where you can tell the filmmakers really did their research when Jesus encourages the children to remember the Shema prayer. You all know how to pray the Shema? Yes. Oh, I would love to hear it. This was a prayer that the Jews would use practically all the time. The prayer goes like this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And after Jesus came along, there was an addition. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. As the children are reciting this in the scene, Jesus gets quite emotional. Later on, he sits down and chats with them about justice and the coming of the Messiah. Not revealing his identity fully yet because he's not ready for his public ministry. So yeah, they do take a few creative liberties, but they did do the research, like I said before. It's a genuine feel-good episode, which is why I think it's one of the best episodes. Sometimes they'll have flashbacks to events from the Old Testament to justify scenes that happen later on in certain episodes. It really helps giving certain scenes a, just that bit more weight. So yeah, this show is genuinely good, and even in its early stages, I think it was destined for greatness. Back in 2017, the team behind The Chosen released a pilot episode around Christmas called The Shepherd, I think it was called, which basically retold the nativity story. Pastor Brian Schwartz endorsed it. I'm going to dedicate this next segment of this video talking about some other brilliant little quirks that I highly admired. The fact that most, if not all, the characters were speaking in Middle Eastern accents, even the children impressively enough. Finally! entertainment based on ancient history and that doesn't involve dramatic British accents. Yeah, but don't you have a British accent as well? Be quiet! I also love how, with the exception of Quintus the Roman officer, 
all the characters are depicted as genuine humans with understandable motives. When I was growing up, we often confused the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the religious leaders. They were all kind of put into one evil bucket. They were the bad guys. Uh, they were the ones who were opposing Jesus from the beginning. There's some truth to some of that, but the Pharisees and Sadducees had actually different beliefs. The Pharisees were actually closer to what Jesus believed, and there are many scholars who believe Jesus actually was a Pharisee because of the fact that the Pharisees were those who really studied the law. They studied the scriptures, they knew the scriptures very well. What we're trying to do with the Chosen is show that for them, it wasn't the traditional villain where they're twirling their mustaches. A lot of this was how a lot of us would react when our expectations are upended. No one actually thinks that they're a villain. Uh, they're actually trying to do the right thing. I also love that with Easter coming so near, and presumably because of the quarantine incident, the same cast and crew behind The Chosen are putting on a church play based on the Passion of Christ. Father. Love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. I mean, wow. Even just watching that church play, the acting is amazing. Something else I also love is that the cast and crew are highly active on social media. They're all really fun to keep up with on social media, and the guy who plays Jesus, Jonathan Romy, I think it is? He's a legitimate cool dude. <laughs> this series is earning nothing but praise. I have seen ratings go up to 9.9 .9 on IMBD. It's not perfect, but it's really close. It's universally appealing, it's critically acclaimed, it seems to me that it was extremely relevant and came out at just the right time. I just want to understand how it happened. It makes two of us. <laughs> so, I didn't think I'd say this, but I think I'm willing to give this series a 12 out of 12. I wish I could continue praising this television series, but I think I've said enough. I mean, even if you don't like this series, I think you're in for a few pleasant surprises. Because one more thing I'd like to mention, this is a very honest group of people making this production, who have all been through various struggles. And they're preaching the good news in a new and unique way, so power to them! So, continue that the good news will continue to spread around, and continue to watch over each other. In the meantime, my friends, Scott Meyer, signing out. This video is in no way sponsored by VidAngel, the company responsible for making The Chosen and The Chosen app. I wish I was sponsored by them, but it's about time I helped them in return. So if you download their app, you can pretty much watch episodes 1 to 10 for absolutely free. You can even download some of the episodes if you're offline, and you can even gain access to behind-the-scenes footage and interviews. So download The Chosen app and watch the entire first season for free.